This video begins to look at efficient determinant computation. So previous videos introduced the concepts of a determinant, but it was clear that in general these would be rather tedious to compute. So what we want is some rules and in particular some shortcuts which will allow much faster and easier computation. Now just to remind you of the general definition of a determinant in case we need it, so if a matrix has got coefficients, lowercase aij, and cofactors, uppercase aij, then you can do the sum along any row or column of the coefficients times the corresponding cofactors. Properties of determinants. Now the properties are critical to understanding how we can manipulate a given matrix to simplify the determinant computations. So what we're going to be focusing on in the next few videos is the properties of determinants. This video is going to focus on two elementary properties which are linked to scaling of the coefficients. An important reminder before we continue, what we have shown in the previous video is that if a matrix is upper or lower triangular, then the determinant reduces to the product of the diagonal elements. And it was also noted that if you have a sparse matrix, that is one with lots of zeros in it, a judicious choice of row or column for the expansion may significantly reduce the overall computation. Now why is that important? Because the rules will often try to exploit these two observations and that will become obvious over the course of the next few videos. So a final observation, if a matrix has an entire row or column of zeros, then the determinant is zero. And this should be obvious from doing expansion along the relevant row or column, i.e. if all along a row or a column, the coefficients a are zero, then when you do the expansion along that row or column, all these are zero, and so you will get zero. And there's an example taken from MATLAB. You can see this matrix has got a column of zeros and the determinant is zero. First rule then. So scaling any row <coughs> or column by some constant k results in a scaling of the determinant by the same constant k. So you'll see we've put the same title here except we've used lambda rather than k. So first illustrate what we mean by scaling any row or column. So here what I'm going to do is scale the second row. You can see here's A on the left and B on the right. What I've done is I've simply scaled all the coefficients on the second row. I've multiplied them all by lambda. So this is what I mean by scaling a row. The same multiplying factor is applied along that row. And this scaling factor could equally be on a column. So we can scale a given row or a given column. But key thing here is only one row or one column is scaled. Here's a different example. You can see here we've got numbers. So the second row has got 6 minus 1, 0. And when I scale that second row by lambda, I get 6 lambda minus lambda and 0. Now a key point. If you look at the second row, here I'm using the second row as an example, but you could use any row, then the second row of B and we look at the second row of A, you will notice these two matrices have got identical cofactors on the second row. So you remember, when we do the cofactors, we cross out the relevant row and column. So if we're talking about the second row, the second row will not be involved in any cofactor calculation. All the minus will be based on the other elements. And what do you notice about A and B if I cross out the second row? A and B are the same. And therefore, the cofactors for the second row are unaffected by this expansion or this scaling with lambda. So if I now say, well, OK, what's the determinant of A? And I'm going to use my expansion along row 2. So you can see A21, A21, A22, A22, and so on. What if I was to find the determinant of B and also do it on the second row? And what you notice is I've got an almost identical expression. The only difference is that I've got lambda A21 where before I had a21, and lambda a22, where before I had a22, lambda a23, where before I had a23, and lambda a24, where before I had a24. So the key thing is the scaling of the second row of B has led to 
a determinant calculation which has just added a lambda to all the terms, but the cofactors have not been affected. So we can do a more generic um, proof if you want. You can take the um, generic expansions for um, determinant. In fact, I could get rid of that for and call it an n if I want to do an n-dimensional expansion. And the key thing is, if the scaling is on a particular row or column, and then I do the determinant expansion on the same row or column, then the cofactors are unaffected. And you will see, therefore, when I do the determinant of B, it's got the same cofactors. You see, I've still used capital A for the cofactors. And all that's happened is the coefficients that were AIJ have become lambda AIJ. And therefore, the determinant becomes lambda A. So scaling a single row or column by lambda changes the determinant by the same factor. A numerical example then. Here's A and here's B. And you'll notice all I've done is multiply by lambda. So here's the determinant for A, and you'll see I've done 6 times the cofactor for A21, which is given there, minus 1 times the cofactor for A22, which is given there, minus 0 times the cofactor for A23. If I do the determinant for B, you can see the expression is almost identical. These two are the same. These two are the same and these two are the same. So all that's changed is I've got a lambda here and a lambda here. So the cofactors are unaffected when I expand along row 2, and therefore you can see the determinant is simply scaled by lambda. Here's a MATLAB example. So you see it's a 4x4 four four matrix. There's A, and the determinant is given down here. The determinant is 3. Now, what would happen if I scale the third row by a factor of 3. So here's the third row, and what I'm going to do is scale that row by a factor of 3. So here, if you look at the third row, there it is, you see I've simply scaled every element in that row by 3, but all the other elements are the same. And what's the new determinant? It's 9. So in other words, it's 3 times 3, as expected. Next rule, scaling Every element in a matrix by some constant results in a scaling of the determinant by k to the power n, where n is the dimension of the matrix. So we'll start with a 2 by 2, for example. So here's A, and the determinant of A we know by now, AD minus BC. Now if I scale every element in A by lambda, there it is, you see I've just put lambda on every element, and do the determinant of B, hopefully it's obvious by inspection, you're going to get lambda squared times AD minus BC. Or in other words, the modulus of B, or sorry, the determinant of B is lambda squared times the determinant of A. So it's a 2 by 2 matrix, and so we get lambda squared. What if I do the same, but now with a 3 by 3? So I've got matrix A and matrix B. I'm just going to multiply every coefficient by lambda. So there's the expression for the determinant of A, doing an expansion, in this case, along the third row. You don't have to use the third row. You can use whichever row or column you like. If I do the corresponding expansion for B, what do you notice? I've got lambdas everywhere. And the key thing is, if you multiply this out, it should be clear you end up with the same expression as the determinant of A, but with a lambda cubed. So for a 2 by 2, we multiply by lambda squared. For a 3 by 3, we multiply by lambda cubed. What happens now if we do a 4 by 4? Now, I'm not going to prove it slowly, because hopefully the result is rather obvious. But you can use a sort of recursive rule if you want. So here's the expression for the 4 by 4 determinant. And now what I'm going to do is replace every element aij by bij, which is lambda aij. So the expression for the determinant of B is given here, and you'll see it's analogous to the expression for the determinant of A. But now what I've got to do is say, OK, the terms are slightly different. And what you can do is you can say that all the cofactors Bij are 3 by 3. And we've shown that for 3 by 3s, the impact is lambda cubed or I've written it lambda to the n minus 1, because here n is 4. So I get lambda cubed times the cofactors for a.
So if I substitute this expression here into here, and then I also substitute the new expression for b into there, what you notice is I end up with a lambda to the n. And I'm not going to dwell any more on this because you can prove it more slowly yourself if you would like to, but the key thing is to know the result. So here's an example. I've got a matrix A, and if you look, what I've done is I've scaled every element by 4. So the 1's become 4, the 2's become 8, the 1's become 4, the 3's become 12, the 4's become 16, the 5's become 20, and so on. So every element has been scaled by 4. Now the determinant of A was 33, so what do we expect the determinant of B to be? <coughs> well, because it's a 3 by 3 matrix, and because the scaling is 4, I simply do 4 to the power 3 times 33, and you get 2,112. Here's a second example. I've got a matrix A, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every element in A by 2. So I'm going to double every element, and I want to compare the determinants. And you'll see before we had 3, and because this is a 4 by 4 matrix, I'm expecting to be doing 2 to the power 4 times 3. And indeed, that's what you get. 2 to the 4 times 3 is 48. Different exa numerical example. Given the known determinant, find the unknown determinant. So here, we're given that the determinant of A is 19, and we're asked to find the determinant of B. Now, if you look, you'll see the first row of A and B are the same. The third row of A and B are the same. So where's the difference? The difference is in the second row. So if I look at the second row, then B is minus 2 times A. So in other words, I've multiplied the row of A by minus, sorry, not minus 2, by minus 3. So therefore, the determinant of B is going to be minus 3 times the determinant of A, which is going to be minus 57. Another example. Given the known determinant, find the unknown determinant. So again, we've got a big matrix here, B, and we're told that the determinant there is minus 6,566. What's the determinant of F? Now, what you'll notice is the first column of A and B is the same. The second column of A and B is the same. The third column of A and B is the same. So where's the difference? The difference is in the third column. So basically, if I look at the third column, then B is 4 times A. So I've multiplied the third column of B by 4. Sorry, I should be saying F equals 4 times B there. So the third column of F is 4 times the third column of B. So in order to get the determinant, so another numerical example. Given the known determinant, find the unknown determinant. So what's happened here? What you'll see has happened is that we have actually scaled, or rather, let's write b equals 2a. You can see that every element in b is twice the corresponding element in a. So b is going to be 2 cubed times the determinant of a, which is 8 times 19. So in summary, for upper or lower triangular and diagonal matrices, the determinant is the product of the diagonal elements. If a matrix is an entire row or column of zeros, the determinant is zero, so we did that before. And the new rules here, if I scale any row by lambda, it results in a scaling of the determinant by lambda. And if we multiply an n by n matrix by a scalar lambda, it modifies the determinant by lambda to the n.